My friend Warren is up here and he has joined me. How you doing, buddy? Uh, good, good. You've Nick. come to every one of our EP lives yes, so far. Yes, I have. Haven't That's awesome. One yet. We, uh -huh. we have this metal. No, we don't. Yeah. We don't have oh, a metal crap. For you, <laughs> it's great that you're here. Thank you. Yep. You're going to be playing the Division Two Private Beta, which we uh, just got our hands on today. Thank you, Ubisoft. And yes. uh, so you're going to go in and you're going to uh, shoot at some bad guys. Um, and uh, you know, stay alive for as long as you can. You do have some resources, like um, uh, I think. What do you do? You've got. Uh, oh, you use these. Like, for, there's your grenade. You can chuck that that way if you want to. Uh, oh, you're getting shot at right there. Okay. Oh, it's in. It's okay. not an invert. I'm an invert okay. guy. Okay. So you got bad guys over there. This is let's play in chat though. So if you've got any questions or comments and you want to talk, uh, help me out. Make it all caps so I can read it a little bit easier, and I'll answer anything or I'll read comments out. But uh, great to see you, Nintendo Boy 17. Uh, GameCube may not have had GTA, but at least there's Simpsons Hit and Run. Yes, man, that's classic. Another fantastic thing about Simpsons Hit and Run made right here in Vancouver. Um, let's see what, what else we got here. We got some uh, questions right down there. Um, uh, oh, another. Uh, I'm not a GTA fan, but every GTA discussion I see, the only, the only, they only talk GTA 3 and onward on consoles and PC. Question uh, from Taz: Have you started to play Kingdom Rush Vengeance? No, I have not. I'm not playing the mobile stuff hardly at all these days. It's all. I mean, we've got. I've got the Switch with me all the time, yeah, and the uh, so I play that if I'm in kind of a mobile space somewhere. If I'm waiting for a movie or something. Uh, and uh, and I'm on my consoles and, and my PC a little bit. Uh, from Game Freak 84, hey Vic, uh, where did you get the Spider-Man on your desk with the blinking eyes? This is the Spiro Spider-Man. Um, they sent it to me to, to review it, and I did have there is a review on our channel of it. And the guy that did the voice for this Spider-Man, because we've silenced it so it's not talking through the whole show, um, actually saw the review and then reached out and, and now we're Facebook buddies. He's, a, he's, a, oh. uh, he's doing well as a voice actor in cool. Los Angeles. But Spiro just recently said they're not going to do any more of these licensed properties. Um, they're going to stick with the robots that they have because they have to spend a lot of money on getting these licenses and doing that. And uh, they've decided so. that they're just going to stick with regular programmable robots. Uh, which kind of sucks because this was, this was really cool. Um, but. If the other robots are making more money for them, totally understand it. What do you think of this game? Oh, it's pretty badass. It looks great, huh? But I see, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they did. This is all a, uh, uh, a post-apocalyptic Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, there's been some pandemic that's that stretched mm -hmm. across the earth. The first one was in New York yeah, City. In New York City, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. this is... Uh, uh, it's cool, and what they've done, it's almost one-to-one -one in terms of Washington City streets as well. There's so much detail. It blows me away how much detail is in Have there. you been to uh, Washington? Uh, uh, to D.C.? Yeah. yeah, to D.C.? Yeah, it's a great Is it like a great exactly city. the same? Or is it yeah, pretty much. I mean, I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay. I played, I had some hands-on time at an event recently, um, but it, it's so cool. Of course, Washington does not look like this, yeah, yeah, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it never will. Um, uh, 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 Masue uh, Martinez, did I say it right? Good to see you. He's here. This is freaking me out. He's here. He's in the chat. He says VS, VFS Cafe is the bomb. So happy to be here live. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, let's see. We got uh, any? Oh, question from Nintendo Boy Seventeen. Speaking of the Switch, did you pick up Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy yet? Uh, no, I'm waiting for a uh, review code from the um, the developer. I think it. It's going to be one that I definitely want to take a look at, and that's going to be surreal for me because you know when I'm doing these these games that I reviewed ages ago and they're back, it's such a weird thing. But I definitely want to check that out. Um, uh, eh, eh, oh, here we go. Uh, Rowan Strata says, uh, "Hey Vic, do you know if WB Montreal is making a new Batman game? I think they've teased that they are. I think they've been none too shy about suggesting that new Batman is on the way from them." Uh, they just aren't ready to tell us yet, uh, more about it, but I can't wait. I've been sort of pinging my friends at Warner Brothers uh, Games to see if anything new is happening in that direction. I'm ready for new Arkham, for sure. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, comment from Tyler Fisher. Hey, Vic, thanks for uh, sending uh, your northern winds down to us. Pretty substantial winter storm <laughs> supposed to slam uh, Portland all weekend. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's super cold up here, too. I think that snow mm -hmm. is in the forecast. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, we haven't gotten the, uh, the polar vortex or whatever was yeah. out east, you know. Hope everybody's doing all right out there with that. I know a lot of people have been uh, suffering through the cold. Uh, uh, party hat cat question, how high are your expectations for Avengers Endgame? They're through the roof. Pretty high. 
Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I can't freaking wait for this movie. I don't care if it's nine hours long. I'll sit there. I'll just bring a, pull, a pillow or something. But I, I can't wait. Um, I think it's going to be sensational. And I think we're going to be saying goodbye to some of our favorite uh, superhero actors, which is going to suck. But I can't wait to see the movie. Um, what are you most looking for uh, to... What are you most looking to for the Division 2? What am I look, looking forward to the most in the Division 2? Uh, I think they've just uh, refined the core experience. And when I had the interviews, I told them that, you know, I'll get to the end game, but I'm not one of those thousand hours in the game kind of people. I just, mm -hmm. I play too many things to review current things and, and stay up on all the new stuff out there. So the end game deficits that the first game had that they kept patching over time, they didn't really bother me that much. Every time I did play the Division One, I, I dug it. I'm just looking to more refinement, better stories, better, you, you know, sort of end battles and boss battles. Um, and what I played, I really enjoyed. It is one of those games, though, where it's like you're sinking hours into it, you get to the end of it, and it's like, oh my god, okay. Whew. Not as to put the controller down and breathe now for a little mm -hmm. bit and take a breath. It's intense. Like you're like you don't want to die and you're stuck in the middle of a firefight and you're hiding in a corner and you know, you're, you're getting blessed. swarmed by waves of bad guys. Very cool game. Um, what do we got here? Comment picked up uh, picked it up yesterday at GameStop. It was the last copy they had. Wonder if that means it's okay. Uh, for what things? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Nintendo Boy 17. Uh, Spider Lewis Gaming comment. Hey Vic, greetings from the UK. It's 11:30 over there. I just wanted to say I really enjoy your content, and I think you deserve way more views. Thank you. Uh, hope to get uh, more involved in the game community. Great community here. You're the best. Thank you so much. Uh, please go and tell about a thousand friends that you have, and ask them to tell a thousand more friends in the UK. Love the UK. Can't wait to get back. And thank you for watching, even though it's very late at night. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, a Canadian bot. I'm the only one who has mixed feelings of The Last of Us having a sequel. Canadian bot 92. Yeah, I think there. You know, I, I think there's probably people at Naughty Dog that have mixed mixed feelings about The Last of Us having a sequel. I'm sure that that was not an easy thing for them to uh, kind of navigate because yeah, the first sure. one was yeah. so phenomenal. It was right? So good, yeah. It was right, really good. And, and you can make missteps. Like mm -hmm. Uncharted 3 is a good game but it's not talked about with the same reverence yeah. that Uncharted 2 was. Uncharted 2 was great, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, so yes, I know that Naughty Dog has been like, we gotta get this right, and, and Sony's given them all the time and money for them to do that, so I, I think it's gonna be amazing. Uh, question from Blake Siefkin, who's this guy? How do we come to the cafe? It's free to come in, please explain. Oh, it's a good question. Uh, yeah, it's, if you ever wanna come and see the show live, we'd love for you to come down. It's cool, it's right in the middle of the day is when the show is and we get that, but it's a, it's a lot of fun and we'll make it worth your while. 3 p.m. is when we uh, make the show. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are at 390 West Hastings in Vancouver, BC. And it's fun here, right guys? Woo! Yes. And you can have some coffee, and you can say hello to guests, and you can check out some cool new games. Uh, 390 West Hastings is the, the, uh, the cafe in the VFS space, uh, and we'd love to see you here. Uh, Paul Casilio wants Vic to review your life. Um, I'm going to give you a 10 out of 10 because you're spending your time wisely watching EP Live. That's awesome. Uh, question from Jamie Andrews. How hard was it for you to restrain yourself from asking more questions about Gears 5? Jamie, you caught that, didn't you, man? I was just like, mm. I kept looking over at uh, at my friend Dana over there who, who was who came with Rod, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my, can I? No, I can't. I had kept having to stop myself. Uh, but Rod, uh, thankfully, had lots of interesting things to say, which I knew he would, even if he couldn't tell us too many new details about Gears 5. Uh, GamerFreak84, hey Vic, I ran across an old uh, broadcast of g when you were on it interviewing people, the good old days of G4. Yeah, I hosted the, uh, the first g event uh, in Hollywood, and that was surreal. We, it was at the Henry Ford Theater in, uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, and I remember walking down the street in Hollywood with the script of the show in my in my back pocket and I just like, how did I get here? I was a video game fan and suddenly I'm hosting this network award show and um, the, the main host was Jamie Kennedy and he was totally stoned, but he, uh, <laughs> he, he, did a, he was pretty funny. Um, and I was with Diane Mazzotta and we were paired up and we did all of the interviews and some throws and stuff like that, but we gave awards to Elijah Wood uh, and uh, we, we just had a terrific time. It was surreal. And I think everybody that was in part of G4, that was the first one in um, 2002 
And I think everybody that was there was just like, it was all surreal. And Public Enemy performed, and I met the people from the Flock of Seagulls, and it, you know, and it was like, what's happening? All of these weird things were going on, but uh, it was terrific. Blade Blur, just a reminder, you're one of the best gaming journalists I've ever had an honor to listen to. This is for you and the success of EP Live. Blade Blur, thank you so much, man. You are the best, you sweetheart. Uh, Vic, when are you headed back to Japan? Let's hit up in uh, Iza Kaya next time you're here from uh, Phil Japan 07. Definitely want to get back. Um, it's been a while. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this year for Tokyo Game Show would be super fun. It's always good to go out there and have at least a day to go to TGS and then do some other things as well. K KFXG question, any plans to get Tommy on the show for an interview in the future, 100%? Uh, we haven't started to do the Skype things yet because um, we wanted to kind of uh, embrace the idea of having a live space and bring guests to it. Uh, but I definitely intend if people can't get to Vancouver, um, uh, you know, for whatever reason, that we will Skype with them. And Tommy's going to be one of those folks that will definitely do that. So sorry if I'm spoiling that surprise, but at some point in the future, you will see Tommy's big head right there. And, I, and that's the only time I can say that he's got a big head because he's been doing that to me forever. <laughs> so F you, Tommy. Uh, question. Uh, um, Will there ever be an organized gaming session soon? Oh, Taz, you know I want to do that, but uh, it's been super, super crazy busy, but we will get to that. You know what would be cool is if we could organize a gaming session right here. Maybe some kind of a meetup where everybody comes and we set up some monitors and we play something together. There's no reason why we couldn't do like a little mini LAN party or something uh, inside the cafe for, for the show. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, Blade Blur, when are you stopping by the Bay Area again? I'd love to meet you uh, on, uh, on uh, your home turf. Uh, I was just down there for this, for the Division II, um, but I will let you guys know when I'm, when I'm coming down next. Uh, Adam Sessler would be a great guest. That's from Game Freak 84. Yes, he would. I miss that Adam Sessler. He's a good dude. Uh, Gamer Freak 84, I like the nice touch of Judgment Day in the background of the new set. That was the idea. Is they're, it's, they're not really Easter eggs because they're big. The logos, it's a big logo that we have behind us. Uh, all of it is big, but I wanted people to see, you know, where we came from. Some of the, uh, some of the different show brands and things that we've done. Uh, Ash S wants us to bring back Vic's Basement. Working on that, mm -hmm. working on mm -hmm. that. Do you miss Vic's Basement it, too? Yeah, I miss it, yeah, I a lot. Yeah, it has to be a different show than EP Live. Yeah. So I'd have to kind of conceptualize that. Um, working on that. Dennis Ryan, speaking of these uh, things produced in Vancouver, have you watched the new Carmen San Diego from Netflix, animated in Vancouver and utterly beautiful? I have to watch that with my kid, eh? I think uh, that's a good uh, recommendation there, Dennis. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, suggestion, bring on the, the Sessler. That's from Tyler Fisher. So that's two votes for Adam Sessler, one vote for Tommy. Uh, Adam's winning today, Tommy. Take that. Uh, JBJ Blaze and TFA, did you guys scare the students away? I'd totally fill a seat if I could be there. Listen, here's what we're doing with the students. Of course the students are invited down here, but the students are in class right when we roll and it kind of, kind of fits because of, uh, you know, they come in here for lunches and then they leave uh -huh. and then we set up and stuff like that. So it kind of makes sense timing wise. Yeah, I was a uh, alumni. I graduated uh, two years ago. No way, you so, came yeah, here. I came right here, yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, so we've been starting to let the teachers know, but if they're super busy, they can't leave. And unfortunately, today would have been great for yeah. the game design students yeah, yeah, yeah. and the programmers to come and listen to Rod. Uh, but you will see the students in here for sure. It's going to happen. Um, and I'm working with the school a little bit more closely to try to figure out, you know, people and timing. And we're going to also have, because a lot of the people that teach at the Vancouver Film School are professionals that have come from really interesting backgrounds and yeah. projects. So they're going to come on the show as guests at, at different stages and, and tell us a little bit about what they do. And uh, maybe we'll start to fill up seats with students and stuff there too. But. Honestly, it's open to the public, and um, if you are in Vancouver and you watch this content and you have the time during the day, come on down. Um, what do we got here? Uh, Wally West, comment, in 2011, did you know that your EP Daily was coming on uh, just as City TV was shutting off during the transmission from analog to digital TV? Uh, Wesley West, it was weird when we sent out the show because we knew we were broadcast all over the place, but it was like we, uh, uh, we just sent out like what are those? Uh, what are those tubes? The, the pneumatic tubes? 
See, you know where you send you send a little message in a tube and you go poof and it just goes. It's kind of like what the sh like sending the show was. It was like poof, it was gone, and we didn't know where the hell it was playing. You know, like we'd get ratings every once in a while, but we do know that people were somehow watching it in like Israel and and uh, South America and uh, all over Canada and like tiny little towns all over the place. Um, and there was one era of EP when we were on MTV Canada Space. Uh, local stations, every, so on the, and we only played on the weekends, but all day on Saturday and Sunday, yeah. you could keep yeah, turning yeah. channels, and there we were. And it was, <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. It's like, what over oh, here? Oh, here it's. Like, and Tommy and I are making fools of ourselves. Uh, yeah, it's been this whole thing has been. Now I'm in a cafe making the show. I don't know how that happened, but th this is this is my career. It's weird. Um, uh, what else we got here? Oh, I'd like, I love that you guys are talking to each other. Have I listened to uh, Scott's podcast, Heavily Pixelated Thoughts? It's awesome. Ash, yes, I have. It's incredible. And I definitely, I talked to Scott just this week. I uh, miss him very much. I miss Marissa very much. I talked to her just this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was on um, the, the Quest to Cure Cancer uh, stream that Sean Hatton put together the other day. So that, I've been, you know, I'm constantly in the orbit of all of my friends that I've worked with. I've, texting with Ben Silverman today, uh, but I definitely want to have Scott on and get caught up. He ha um, does get to Vancouver every once in a while, so he knows that next time he's here, he's going to be on the show. Um, but I, I, sh I yeah, he's, many cool things are going on for him in his world because of his work on this podcast, and I'm very happy for him. And if you're not listening to Heavy, Heavily P Pixelated, you absolutely should. Uh, question from Tyler Fisher. Was uh, I just too high, or was Judgment Day the first glimpse most of us in the States got of EP content? Judgment Day, uh, well, we syndicated down the west coast of the U.S. Our first stations were American. We launched on um, Belling in Bellingham in our area here on KVOS. We had a Seattle affiliate. We had a uh, Portland affiliate. We had a San Francisco station, KBHK in San Francisco. We had an L.A. station. So that was the first time. And those were the first markets that we, we got, and then we sold into Canada. And uh, so we launched season one, and Americans were watching the show. Uh, but the, our first network um, was, no, was uh, Discovery Science. We were a digital cable uh, uh, network partner in 2001, uh, and all of that changed because of the 9-11 the terror attacks. The, uh, the, com the whole sort of infrastructure of you Discovery changed, and all, everything changed in the world. But those terror attacks also changed our relationship with Discovery at that time. They just shifted course. And, uh, and then G4 happened, and G4 liked my idea for um, uh, reviews on the run as a TV show, but they wanted to call it Judgment Day. And so that was the first thing that we launched with them. We got a six episode uh, um, uh, order from them. We made six episodes, and we got more, and then we got more, and then we just kept growing and growing from there. Uh, Device no, no, we don't, Blake. Uh, question, KFXG, is it more challenging to do the show now than it was early on? Different challenge. Now it's, uh, I, I love this format. I think this is super fun. I love that I'm chatting with you guys and, and uh, we're streaming out live and we're having guests and all that stuff. It's a different challenge. It's a little bit more like we set everything up and then we go. And, and the way that we produce the edited pieces is we go off with a tiny little bit of kit, we shoot it, and then we put it together, and that takes time as well. Um, Entering safe area. It's all been fun, all of it. And I'm constantly learning, and that's, that's why I love doing what I do. But you know what? It is, uh, it is time for, oh, and one more question. Considering the whole uh, Sessler talk today, how were your interactions with him in the past? Uh, always very positive with Adam Sessler. He's been on our shows in the past. Um, I've done things with him in the past. We were both, you know, network mates on uh, G4. He didn't have the best of time there, uh, but we did. We had a great time. We were an external partner, and we had a great, long, healthy relationship with those guys. Um, but he, I, he's uh, he's super passionate and articulate and funny, and and uh, he's a good dude. And I've always enjoyed my time with him. We actually had him on a Vic's Basement podcast. Uh, audio only, which I think you can listen to on uh, on iTunes. I think it's probably still archived up there, and he, and he was terrific. But that's going to do it for us today, you guys. Did you have fun? Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it's a lot of fun. Cool game, it's right? a pretty cool game, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be playing a little bit more of this, I think, this weekend. But uh, I'm also playing uh, uh, Far Cry and uh, Crackdown 3. So some Ooh. reviews of those things coming up, nice. and, and more Wargroove as well. 
Uh, that's it for today, and uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for coming here. Thank Warren. you. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Nice to meet we're, you. we're back on Monday with another brand new EP live for you, and my guest. Yeah, uh, two guests actually, uh, two team members that worked on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And we're gonna talk about that phenomenal film and all of the awards it's been collecting, deservedly so, uh, and the making of it. Um, I cannot freaking wait. It's also my birthday on Monday. So oh. it's kind of this cool birthday present that I get to talk. Years old, right? 21 years old <laughs> for the third time. I, no, it's, <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to have a phenomenal day uh, talking with people that made one of my favorite things of the mm -hmm. last 10 years. I freaking love that movie. It's a great uh, movie. It's so good, good movie, right? Yeah. So please come back for that. Um, in the meantime, check out all the other content that we've got uh, on the channel. If you dig our stuff, if uh, uh, you know, hit subscribe, hit like. Uh, you know, comment below if you're watching the archive of this. You can join and become an EPN member and support the show that way. Uh, there's lots of merch that you can uh, check out as well at epn.tv slash merch. And uh, we can't wait to see you again. If you do have the time to come on down to uh, 390 West Hastings in Vancouver, please come and join our live audience or watch the stream. We'll be back at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time on Monday. Until then, play forever.